Now, as I mentioned, the second um, basically type of searching is our conflict search. And that is typically a part of our intake process. Um, also can be done after intake if you're doing something like adding a new alias name for your client or editing your client name, things like that. We'll go ahead and just start a quick intake together. As we're looking at this intake, I just wanna point out quickly um, that in our intake or any other form, if you see a red asterisk next to a field name, that means the field is required. You have to have a value in it to continue. We also have some defaults on some fields. So you'll notice intake date is defaulting to today. Um, the intake type is defaulting based on my preference that we looked at earlier. So you may see some fields that are already filled in for you based on those defaults. We then have our client name. As I scroll down here, I'm going to actually leave these two fields um, blank for now. So you can see what happens if I try to continue without entering a required field. But we'll enter the rest of our required fields. Um, again, your first page of intake probably looks at least a little bit different from this one, just based again on our configuration. But once I click continue, it's going to tell me up at the top. Um, first, you'll notice, of course, we haven't actually moved on. So if I look at my sidebar, I'm still right on this first step. And I can see up at the top what I've missed. So I can see that I've missed two fields that are required. Also, if I scroll back down to where those two fields are, they'll be highlighted in red as well. So it makes it very obvious which ones I've missed here. I can then go ahead and actually choose my values. And this time when I click continue, I should be brought to my second step of the intake process. Now, typically the second step is your conflict check results. Um, again, your intake could be set up a little bit differently uh, because it's almost always the step after we collect the client name. Um, before we talk about this list view here, I just wanna mention that you'll notice that again on our sidebar, now we're on our second step. And I can't click forward in the process. So I can't skip any steps in my intake. I couldn't click on applicant demographics before going through financial information. But I can always go backwards. So if I realized I, for instance, spelled the client name wrong, I could go back to my initial information, edit the client name or whatever I had to do, click continue again, and then be back with my new edited information here. Now this is going to look very similar to that search list view that we received when we searched with our red search link for clients. But this is our conflict check result search. Um, the main difference here is that you'll have a radio button within your intake process. So if I decide that the test tasks that I'm doing an intake on is actually the same person as any of these results, I can select my radio button and associate this new case with that existing client record. Again, we have links to the client profile and the case profile. So if I need to see more information before actually making that determination, I can. I also see some more information about the case. And then again, all the way on the right, I've got the score. So this one is the highest scored. We've got all of our stars filled in because my first name matches, my last name matches, and my date of birth matches. So this conflict check result will look at all of those things as well as the social security number if you've entered one. If I scroll down, you'll start to notice most of these are just with the first and last name matches. And then we get to some where the date of birth does not match. So if both the case, the intake that we're doing right now, we've entered a date of birth, and the, the record that's showing up in the results has a different date of birth, it will still show up here. But again, it will have a lower ranking based on that fact. 